like any work of art. It began with a simple idea. People showed up when the art fair opened that first year. I was like, where did all these people come from? Like any work of art, the bigger the idea, the bigger the impact. It's one of the top three or four art fairs in the country. Like any work of art, the beauty is in the details. I think covering all aspects of art is something that opens up the art world to everyone. Every year on the second weekend in September, the city of Clayton transforms into the village of imagination known as the St. Louis Art Fair, presented by the Centene Charitable Foundation. But this year is special. This year, the St. Louis Art Fair turns 25. 25 years is a long time. I feel like we're established. <laughs> I think that the art fair itself is really a shining beacon. It's part of the fabric, part of the culture that's become of our city. I can't imagine doing without it. It's my favorite weekend of the year. Soon, more than 180 of the finest artists in the world will once again bring their work to the St. Louis Art Fair, sharing their creativity with more than 130,000 new and returning visitors who come from all over the world, looking for just the right thing to put in just the right place. And along with the art, they will also be entertained and well-fed. Everybody loves it and we enjoy the sales tax that comes with it. We're moving, we're evolving. Uh, we've been here for 25 years, so yes, it's exciting to celebrate our past, but look at where we're going in the future. You know, the arts are just another way that we connect as a community. It breaks down barriers in ways that, that we desperately need in St. Louis and beyond. So I think having those conversations around art or that start with art help lead us to other ways that we can connect. You know, just walking around, seeing friends. The greatest experience is to see the community come together, enjoying themselves, sharing something. Friends. That's what a girl named Jill and a boy named Chad were becoming in 2003, when he said to her, meet me at the fair. It was their first date. It turned into a masterpiece. Yeah, we would call the St. Louis Art Fair our anniversary night. Yeah. And so we, we wanted to go out at the art fair as an anniversary experience every year after. I like art that uh simplistically just reminds me of something. So like the poster we got from the art fair reminds us of our first date. Going with Chad to the art fair was a huge turn in my life. I wouldn't have him as an amazing husband. I wouldn't have my three amazing kids. And that ex I feel like that experience was a cornerstone in our lives. Over the past 25 years, the St. Louis Art Fair has gotten bigger and the setup has gotten better. But it's still a huge job that happens in just one day, beginning while the city around it is still sleeping. So about three o'clock in the morning, it's still dark out. <laughs> the staff shows up and we start numbering the streets. We start putting the booth numbers in. That way the tent company knows where to put the booths. And then it just is a ripple effect from there. The stages arrive, the porta potties start to arrive, and um, by the time five o'clock rolls around, Tent City has appeared. And the teardown is just as impressive because Sunday when it's over at five o'clock, we're streets are open, we're open for business on Monday morning. It's a huge job. Critical to making it all work is a group of more than 1,000 dedicated volunteers who put in 10,000 hours every year to make sure the fair runs smoothly. I had attended the art fair several years and really liked just walking around looking at the art. And after visiting a couple of the booths, I asked some of the volunteers, you know, do you enjoy working for the fair? And some of them said this was the best volunteer job they'd ever had. Every year, artists from all over the world try to get one of the coveted spots at the St. Louis Art Fair. 
Typically, more than 1,000 apply, but only 181 are accepted. The difficult decision about who gets into the show is made by a five-person jury, charged with making sure the fair offers both quality and variety. For many years, the jury process has always been sort of this mysterious thing that takes place behind a closed curtain. <laughs> and for us, it's important to make sure that it's as transparent as possible. We schedule at least 30 hours for the jury process, which is much longer than the art fair is actually open to the public. But long after the fair closes to the public, its work continues with year-round programs designed to give young people and budding artists new ways of thinking about what they can do with art and what art can do for the world. One of those is the Student Art Aficionados program. I didn't know that art could be like photographs and stuff like that, so I'm not a very good drawer, so this kind of got me introduced into more photography and building things with my hands, and that was really awesome. The Student Art Aficionados program provides students from local schools with the opportunity and the money to shop at the fair, not for themselves, but for their schools. Those students then have to get up before their classmates and defend the choices they made. Some of the pieces they selected also become part of a traveling public art display. They're learning these budgeting skills and they're learning, you know, all these other transferable life skills, public speaking skills. That's really, you know, the future, I think, of, of cultural festivals, thinking about ways that we can ingrain art in the St. Louis community and beyond. They were so excited that they're in charge. Um, so they went to the every booth and they look at details. Um, they ask questions, they met the artists. I guess how we did it is we just did it by um, which one we liked the best. And so the one we chose was Neil Brown, Neil Brown. It's a picture of a dog in like this landscape. And he takes the picture. He paints it, he makes it look nice. And he finishes this at like 3 a.m. I think. And so when he goes to write um, the name of the painting, which he was gonna name it Guide Dog, but he was so tired that he wrote his name twice, so he wrote Neil Brown, Neil Brown. <laughs> Another thing that cultural festivals does is really help mentor artists. And so we have something called the Emerging Artists as Entrepreneurs Program, something we're very excited about. You wouldn't think that um, an artist needs to learn how to pack a van. That doesn't really become uh, an issue until you're going out to do art fairs, or for instance, how to start an LLC, or uh, tax implications. Those aren't things that artists typically kind of start thinking about when they're creating their art. That really comes into being when they're trying to figure out how to make a living at, uh, at art. I can't recommend the program enough. I had a really wonderful experience and I'm so grateful that they, they offer something like this. Um, I had been trying to do shows prior to that and just felt like I was banging my head against the wall because I didn't know who to, who to ask. And I was nervous to approach you know, like a veteran and be like, so just tell me how to do this. <laughs> So I was so grateful to find that program and, and be involved and go through the process. We love the, the emerging artists uh, portion of it because it gives local people who have some creativity and art skills the opportunity to show what they show. And when those folks end up being in the art fair, what a glorious day it is for everyone. The St. Louis Art Fair is about more than just galleries of artwork. One of the great qualities of the St. Louis Art Fair is it offers visitors more than just tents full of art. After all, music is also art, and so is food. The one thing you won't find at this fair is a starving artist. I would say my favorite aspect of the fair when I get a chance to see it is Restaurant Row. We get a really diverse, eclectic mix of restaurants every single year. Uh, our returning restaurants are more than happy to come back. And we also try to have as many new restaurants as possible. Showcasing the local talent that we have here in St. Louis is important because we have a lot of great talent here. And we've got three stages of entertainment that will hit on all genres from folk to bluegrass to jazz, theater, storytelling, and being able to showcase that local talent's important to us. Part of the fun of going to the art fair is you never know what's around the next corner, but some shoppers prefer a strategic approach. And that's why the St. Louis Art Fair, in partnership with HEC, has developed an innovative collaboration called Meet the Artists. Several months before the St. Louis Art Fair opens, HEC crews 
track down many of the artists who will be appearing here, and then travel the country recording short video vignettes about their work. Those videos are available for viewing even before the fair opens. Just go to stlfair.com or get the St. Louis Art Fair app. The videos can also be seen at the fair itself, inside the HEC tent. Among the artists profiled by HEC for this year's fair is painter Tate Hamilton. I love painting people. It's a challenge. I want to capture gesture and movement. So when I'm painting, I'm looking at the image and I see the movement that the person is making. If I can capture that, then I think people feel it. I'm Tate Hamilton and uh, I do oil paintings. I use five colors to paint with. It's a challenge and it's a lot more fun too. So what I do is I take sap green and alizarin crimson and mix them together and then a little bit of ultramarine blue. Every single dark color that you see on all my canvases is a combination of that. If you see the photo over there, there are some dark shapes. You know, I just kind of start doing the shapes. Everything starts off very abstract. So I've got these shapes here that I'm doing. I start with the darks and then I get lighter and lighter. See that movement right there in the, yeah, see, I like that. And, and then I also like, I like this. See that his leg, his uh, right leg is out in front of his other leg. That is a cool movement there. And what's cool about this piece is the contrast. You have two people that are fairly close together and, and then the third person is further away. And I'll probably put him even a little more out of the way, like way over here, because what that does is it makes an imbalance, which, is, which really is a, more appealing to the eye. As I get lighter in value and color, then I start cutting out the previous shapes to get what I've got. I'll always do oils, always. I like the way it feels. I like the flow. I like the texture. I like the way it goes on. I do paint wet on wet. Some people, they'll take months to do a, a piece. What I do is a la prima in, in one sitting. So, uh, but I stand while I paint. So in one standing basically. So I'll do the entire piece, no matter if it takes uh, 10, 15, 20 hours, you know, I'm working on it till it's done. New York and Paris are the two places I like to go because there's always people all the time out there. My wife will take some photos and I take some. I don't n normally do a lot of faces because I like for people to put their own face. Oh, that looks like so-and-so, doesn't it? And, and I like that. If there's too much detail, I don't think the paintings last as long either because you get bored with it. Yeah, there it is right there. With these, you can look at it one day and you go, uh, yeah, I, I see this. It puts me in this mood. The next day you go, well, now I see that and it puts me in this mood. I'm still learning and, and that's something that's very important. This is what I tell people, especially kids when they come in my booth. You know, no matter what you want to do, it takes practice. And that's all it is. It's about practice. And I'm still practicing. So I don't, I don't think I'll ever be at the point where I've mastered anything because there's always going to be something else to learn. Meet an artist appearing at the St. Louis Art Fair who is from St. Louis and creates amazing objects made from glass. I was always a maker of things. I was always interested in making things out of wood or metal or leather or whatever. When I discovered glass, I, I, I guess I was just fascinated by it immediately and I fell in love with it. I, I started blowing glass in St. Louis at Washington University. 
in about 1981, and I was interested in having my own studio. Found this old building here in Augusta and started building furnaces. I'm Sam Stang, and this is Kaiko Maihata, and we're standing in our gallery here in Augusta, Missouri. We were both glass makers. My work is, is known for uh, clean forms and bright colors and bold patterns, often intricate patterns uh, interspersed with bold patterns, very fine detail often. The application of color and pattern probably come from things I've seen in nature. It, it, it can come from almost anywhere for me. I tend to use really vibrant, bright colors. A lot of other glass artists use more muted colors, more earthy colors, or more uh, tones. And I, I tend towards primary and secondary colors because it's what I really love, you know? try to make the bottom of this thing be very a sharp corner. So Kaya is going to paddle and Miles is going to blow very lightly. Go ahead everybody, press harder, press harder. Stop. The early days of American Studio Glass were basically a lot of free form, dripping glass around and calling it sculpture. And I, I wasn't really interested in that, and I didn't really have a great deal of respect for a lot of that work. What I was interested in was more the work that was being done in Italy, in Sweden, Scandinavia, which was designed by designers and made by master craftsmen. My interest was to be a designer and master craftsman all rolled into one, which is what I've been trying to achieve. Glass is a unique material because it, it has no form. So what, what I start with is a pot of molten glass, which is like honey. Well, in many ways, it's different from a woodworker or a metalworker who starts with a, a form and then has to remove material. And I have to enlarge it by blowing into it and shape it. But the material itself doesn't want to be symmetrical necessarily. It's trying to be asymmetrical. This technique, uh, which is, this is called reticello, and it's, it's basically a net pattern. And when I do shows, and whenever I have customers come in and see this, most people can't believe that this could possibly be made by hand, this, this technique. And I have to say this was developed in probably the 1600s in Italy, again in white and clear. Um, and it, it's one of the most complex patterns to make. Having a glass shop, glass studio, is very different from any other sort of art or craft studio that I can think of because it's so expensive to produce. My gas bill alone is enormous and my materials are enormous, but the majority of the work that you see in there, I'd say almost all of it, are things that, uh, that I wanted to make, that, I, that I'm interested in, and that I'm not too worried about having to sell them because that seems to take care of itself. I have to be efficient and I have to make each day count. Um, so I am forced to think about, at the end of the day, did I produce enough to make it all worthwhile? So I am forced to, to make things that fit in a price range. I actually find that to be a challenge and that's a design challenge as well. What can I make that somebody who, who's not wealthy can afford and it's still beautiful and it's still something they'd want to own. Fortunate in that so far people have bought what I, what I like and what I want to make. Remember, you can see more Meet the Artist profiles right now 
at stlfair.com. So how did this world-class art fair get its start? Clayton Mayor Harold Sanger witnessed the birth. In 1993 was really the embryo of the art fair. It was created by Mayor Yushitel and his wife Susan, and they had a terrific vision. And uh, we've supported it over the years. It's been a terrific thing for the city of Clayton. And the fair has been good for the entire area. Its economic impact is estimated at more than $2.3 million. The businesses uh, have definitely benefited from this, not just here locally, but I think throughout the St. Louis area, through the hotels. Patrons are purchasing art, it needs to be framed. Um, they're looking to now maybe purchase season passes to a Jazz St. Louis or the Symphony. And so I think that ripple effect has been extremely valuable to our community. The uh, Department of Commerce, a few years ago, uh, started compiling numbers by state to look at the impact of the arts economy state by state. And the first time that those numbers were broken out was in 2015. Missouri led the pack. We are the fastest growing state in terms of the arts economy in the United States. That's a very exciting place to be, especially exciting to be a part of a huge event here in St. Louis that, uh, that helps drive that arts economy. While the fair generates a lot of money, Putting on an event of this size and quality also costs a lot of money. Fortunately for the St. Louis Art Fair, every year generous corporate sponsors offer their support. We are the presenting sponsor of the St. Louis Art Fair because we believe it is really very important that we continue to represent the community and the community continues to represent itself in the most constructive, positive way. Commerce loves um, the, the vibrancy and the excitement and the creativity that the St. Louis Art Fair brings, not just to Clayton, but to our entire St. Louis region. And we are really proud that we can be a sponsor and a partner uh, in making that happen. Perpetually in Motion is our theme for the 25th anniversary. To honor our 25th anniversary and to honor the people who have helped make this a success, we've commissioned a father and son team to create a piece of public art that we will donate to the community. So we're working with Jeff and Carl Zachman. It's a father-son team out of Minnesota. Jeff has been doing the art fair on and off for the last several years. He does kinetic sculptures. And his son Carl deals more with gears, but it's movable, uh, two-dimensional work. And so they're teaming up together to create a piece that will sit in a public space in honor of the 25th anniversary. So we see this 25th year as a promise, and it's a cultural promise. And we think of it in terms of the kids that came to the arts fair 25 years ago have grown up with the art fair. I mean, it's amazing, right? You know, you have families that are coming to the art fair year after year after year. We watched the generation grow up. Now they're bringing their kids. So what I'm excited about is thinking out 25 years about the folks that are coming out to the art fair today as children and the opportunity for them to bring that next generation. What began with a simple idea has grown into an art fair with tremendous impact not just on the artists, not just on the visitors, and not just on the bottom line. What the St. Louis Art Fair has done in its first 25 years is to prove that this city, in the middle of the country, has earned a special place at the center of the world of art. It's hard to know whether the fair will become even bigger over the next 25 years, but the first 25 years have proven that this fair always strives to become even better. Mm -hmm.